Hi, this is Imtiaz with another video on Launch Excel C2000 microcontrollers and this time we will be discussing I2C and for that we will be using the ADXL345 accelerometer which is very common and which is pretty much used by every hobbyist in, in, on YouTube. So if you have watched my previous video in which uh, we have discussed how to set up Launch Excel in Simulink by showing a blink LED example and we also have covered a video on how to use the ECAP module of Launch Excel. So you can watch those videos as well and you can find the link to those videos in the description uh, below. Now the first thing we are going to do is go to the ADXL345 uh, datasheet and see how we can communicate with the uh, this accelerometer and what's the I2C communication protocol look like. So we will go to the data sheet here and in the, in the data sheet uh, you can go straight away to the I2C section and you can find the I2C address as well here in this section and this is I think uh, mentioned here uh, which is this one. So we will be using this address in the ADSL345 and if we come down here uh, you can find the uh, communication protocol structure here and if we kind of zoom so we will be uh, we will be setting the control register in the ADXL 345 using this can this type of communication you see here and then we will be reading the uh, accelerometer data from uh, all the three axes using uh, this communication so we will be reading multiple bytes but we will be uh, writing single byte and this is if you see uh, during writing we will provide the slab address and then the register to the register address to to which we are uh, we are writing something or some data and then followed by data and then the stop condition and the uh, read uh, operation will be giving the slab address register address and then again register address plus read command and then the adxl345 will give us the required amount of data that we have mentioned and then we will uh, send a not acknowledge uh, statement and then uh, followed by a stop statement now go to the we will go to the simulink and execute this uh, this protocol there in the simulink okay before going to the simulink and executing the uh, i2c protocol structure there first we have to uh, write down uh, make a m, m file that is not necessary but it will help you to organize your I, I square c communication thing and here i have created a matrix which holds the data and the register value and we'll be accessing this data variable there in the simulink uh, later when we will uh, program our i square c sensor so this is you can see uh, the first one is the register address and this is the bandwidth rate and um, bandwidth rate control register and it also set like what mode you are uh, operating the ADX, ADXL 345 in so the you can you can you can uh, read all, all uh, about this in the data sheet and if you want I can even show you here is the if you come down here these are all the registers uh, so the one that we are currently using are the bandwidth rate then the power control and then somewhere here in the this one the data format so we are, we are only using these three registers this is very simple uh, simple use of this ADXL 345 obviously it has a lot of feature other as well so probably you can explore that as well and then these are the regist these are the explanation for those registers so you can read all about this in uh, in the data sheet so as we have discussed in the data sheet uh, we are using the 2c address uh, register and then the data that we are going to send is zero and similarly for all the three registers now we will go to simulink and, uh, and uh, start programming the isqc now we are here in the simulink and the first thing that we are going to do is obviously go to the library browser and find the i2c transmit block and in this transmit block um, you can you will here type the register the slab address which in our case is hex 53 and in this image it is 83 and then the bit count is 8 
and yes we want a stop condition at the end of communication and here we have two options i square c a or b so we are using i square c a and then we don't want the re repeat mode and that's it then what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a matlab function that will be getting the data from the the variable that we have stored in the matlab so let me create a matlab function So the input to this function will be a u, sorry, iteration and u. And the output of this function will be uh, y equal to, this will be a vector. So that will be u of iteration. iteration and then one and the next uh, element of this vector will be u of iteration and then two And then we will close the bracket and that's it we'll save it and now we are good to go to back to the simulant program so that's this is the matlab function and the output of this function will go straight away into the i square c block and then we will create a constant block and in the constant block i'll type the data variable name which is data and the output data type i will set here unsigned add and feed it to the input input to this matlab function and then i'll use a while iterator so because we will be executing this block for three times and every time it will be getting two data which one the one will be uh, the register address and the second will be the data and i'll do it as do while and show iteration number and this i will keep it at minus one and uh, we'll i'll remove the initial condition and then i'll bring this uh, all this thing into the while loop iterator uh, section and paste it here yeah Now I'll uh, bring a condition block which is uh, compare constant and I'll feed it into the while iterator while while iterator and the value inside here will be the length of data and the output data type is boolean so if this is true it will execute continue to execute the while iterator subsystem if this is false so it will stop and i'll make it smaller than this thing and the out output of this while i try to subsist uh, while i try to be fed back to uh, this condition and this will be also inserted in this iteration and this matlab function block and that's it the we don't if you, if you want to see the transmit status you can see that but I'll ignore it and then we will also delete this yeah and then one other thing uh, we should add a virtual block to because we'll be needing some delay and that you, you can again find in the data sheet of the ADXL 345 you will need some delay between every two command and uh, let me uh, yeah so the block that we will be using for that delay is the system outputs so this is a virtual block it will only execute a code which you write here and you will type the code that is used in the the launch excel uh, code composer studio libraries so the code for delay is underscore uh, microsecond 
delay inverse per microsecond and that is uh, I'll I'll give it uh, 3000 microsecond so that is 3 millisecond so after every uh, command it sent to the I square C it will wait for 3 second sorry 3 millisecond and that's it now this is uh, if you if you have noticed in the I square C communication protocol we we do the configuration only one time at the start of the uh, by powering up the uh, microcontroller and the um, sensor so we do the configuration only once and then we um, put the data data loop in a infinite while loop so that we get the data um, after a certain amount of time so we will ensure <coughs> to run it for a single time that is run it only once at the start of the program and we can do that by creating a simple logic here that is uh, by typing this and bringing these block and then and then we will um, use a not we can change the shape as well so and the data type is obviously in output it will give you a simple boolean statement so I'll make it rectangular here and I'll make this uh, enable system so if this is one it will be executed if this is uh, zero it will not be executed and then uh, I'll use a red transition block so this block will be executed only once and then again a similar block here and this will be executed um, in infinitely so as long as the program is running it will be executed we don't uh, we only need this block and I'll copy this and paste it on the on this canvas and we will delete this thing and now as per the protocol uh, we will be providing a register address which is 50 and the output data type is unsigned at and the register the slave address are uh, slave addresses as you know is 83 and I don't want the stop condition and uh, this is a, again as per the protocol mentioned in the data sheet and we also don't want the repeat mode so I'll just uh, unclick these all these options and now we will so one is this thing and then uh, we also need some delay so again we will use the system outputs and here uh, I'll this time I'll use a delay of uh, I think 10 millisecond is I think uh, 100 microsecond is enough so that's a delay and then we will uh, go to the library and bring the the I square C receive block so where is that oh, yeah this thing so this I square C receive block we will again the address is 83 and we are you we are getting we will be getting uh, six data bytes and we want the uh, stop condition at the end of the data and the sample time is minus so that is 0 0.02 and the output data type is unsigned 8 and that's it so you now what we are going to do is we are using a function function uh, function call subsystems so the function call subsystem is basically will execute the subsystem uh, one by one and this is a function call generator and one we will be needing is function call split And then the data that we will be getting from this block, uh, 
will be 6 bytes and uh, that will be in the format that is mentioned in the data sheet so we will have to convert that data and into meaningful form so for that i'll use this uh, logic this logic i have created uh, before recording this video and let me i'll explain it um, this is basically the the data that we are getting from this block is in unsigned form so the first thing we are going to do is we are converting this data into integer 16 and then the uh, the second byte is left shifted uh, by 8 and then it is odd with the first byte so this will give us the accelerometer x reading and then obviously i'll use the out port here and here i'll add the display to show the display and uh, i'll add a scope as well Uh, that's it. Uh, that is how we uh, we program an I squared C sensor and simulink using any microcontroller. So this technique is this procedure is basically same for all the microcontrollers, not just specific to Launch Excel uh, C two thousand microcontroller. Only the I squared C block shape will be changed, and the internal features or the internal setting will be changed, but rest it will be same and you see this is the overall program structure now let me uh, execute this and it will take some time and then i'll come back and show the result here i executed the program uh, but it was giving me a uh, data with a very slow rate and the mistake i made was in this block so the sample time should be 0 0.02 and I, I will execute it again and will show you the results after this uh, now the program is running again in the symbol link and here you see the values are coming from the ADXL345 and it is lying at a certain angle on the table if I make it completely flat on the table you will see the reading uh, will change there so it, it is now lying completely on the Z axis and still you see although the there should be a zero value on the X and Y value but this you can count on count as an error in the ADXL345 and there are some error adjustment register in this uh, accelerometer so you can use those registers and uh, compensate for the error in the x and y and similarly there will be an error in the z axis as well so that depend upon the calibration but let me show you the result in the scope as well uh, so here you see the if i if i rotate it if I rotate it about an axis um, that is Z axis, sorry Y axis, so you see there is a change. And if I rotate it about uh, Y axis, this is again there is an, again another change. So this is how we uh, program a I squared C based modular sensor in the uh, simulink. So this was the uh, ADXL 345. Uh, yeah, there is a there, there was a viewer who uh, requested me to look into the um, the crystal display that we use in the Arduino and how to program this in the simulink. So if that viewer has the issue of how to program in this structure, so the structure will be same only the data sheet command and the execution will be different. The rest the how to use the I square C blocks so that will remain same for all the all type of sensor that are running on I2C. So that's it uh, for this video. Hope you like the video and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.